Hi everyone and welcome to Perth South Model Railway Channel. I was lucky enough to be able to visit the Great Electric Train Show at Milton Keynes last month and I'd like to show you here some of the layouts that were on display. This is part one of a two-part series. My thanks to Andrew from the Heritage and Model Rail Channel for providing the layout commentaries. If this is your first time to Perth South Channel, Start now by becoming a subscriber and click the bell icon for notifications. This double O gauge layout is called West Coast Cement, exhibited by Hornby Magazine. This West Coast mainline scene is one of the latest layouts to be completed by the Hornby Magazine team. Modelled in double O gauge, it recreates a fictitious section of the West Coast Main Line north of Preston in the 1995-2005 to 2005 period. The track plan for the main lines consists of a simple double track circuit with a goods loop on the inner line. There is a cement works behind which receives regular arrivals and departures. At the back is an 11 track storage yard which normally hosts around 20 trains for an exhibition weekend. The layout uses digital command control. Gauge Master Prodigy handsets drive the trains and Hornby's Railmaster computer control software takes care of all the point and signal operations via a twin screen monitor connected to a PC. The vast majority of the locomotives are equipped with digital sound with only the overhead electrics not being equipped with sound decoders. Train formations are representative of the transition from BR to privatisation in the late 1990s and as such viewers will see a wide range of colour schemes applied to the locomotives and rolling stock. These include late BR schemes, the first private operators and famous names such as Virgin Trains, Network Rail and English, Welsh and Scottish. This double O gauge layout is Fenny Stratford, exhibited by David Court. This end-to-end -end layout is an accurate representation of Fenny Stratford Station on the nearby Bletchley Bedford line in the 1950s when it was twin tracked to Bedford. The section modelled is from Stag Bridge which carries the former A5 trunk road to where the railway crosses the Grand Union Canal. A busy goods yard serving Rowlands Timber Company and a small coal business together with a livestock loading dock are also featured. 
Stock is all XLMS and LNER as prototypical for the period. Control is DCC using the NCE power cab system with Kindle Fire handheld units controlling locomotives and route setting via the JMRI wireless application. Slow action point motors with micro servos control turnouts, signals and level crossing gates using the JMRI Panel Pro software instead of a conventional panel. This 00 gauge layout is Bournemouth West, exhibited by the South Coast Model Railway Development Group. Bournemouth West models the southern terminus of the Somerset and Dorset Railway, which closed in 1965. The layout is built at 00 gauge and is based in the 1959-1962 period. As well as being the terminus for the trains travelling to Bournemouth over the Somerset and Dorset line from Bath, it was also the terminus for the holiday and cross-country traffic from the North and Midlands. It was used as a terminus for London Waterloo trains using the LSWR route. Many of these trains were split at Bournemouth West, the other portion going to Weymouth. Other services operated from here to Salisbury, together with push-pull trains to Brockenhurst via Wimborne. All the above, plus others, are represented on the layout in a sequence lasting some three and a half hours. Using photographs and drawings, we have attempted to portray the station as it was in this period. The layout is built to 00 fine scale standards using CNL track. All points are hand built. Buildings are in the main scratch built. We use a digital control system which allows us to set routes in and out of the station, operate using sound and gives us an automatic uncoupling function. Signals are all scratch built and fully operational with slow action and bounce. We are also operating some of our colleagues locomotives which are fitted with smoke fully synchronized with the wheel revolutions. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to repeat that announcement in case you missed the first time around. If you travel by rail to see us today from Harrow to Wheelston, uh, we think we may have your the return half of your ticket here. So if you travelled to Lincoln Central from Harrow to Wheelston today, just check that you have your return ticket because we have one here. At the moment, we don't need to go to our own ministry. If it's yours, if you'd like to put yourself in the we'd be happy to see you.
This P4 layout is Shelvington and Rides Hill, exhibited by Matt Farrell and Lee Paulson. This 4mm scale P4 gauge terminus layout models BR's southern region in the late 1970s and early 1980s when the BR blue and grey were the dominant rolling stock colours. Shelvington and Rides Hill is set in West Surrey at the end of an electric line branching off the Portsmouth direct line from Walpolston. There is a diesel only branch back to Guildford completing the third leg of the triangle though this was reduced to a single track in the 1950s. The layout uses digital command control and includes a number of sound fitted DEMUs. The rolling stock is typical of the area and the period and covers class 205, 206, tadpole and 207 thumper units as well as a mixture of EMUs working on the electrified line. There are also class 33s and 73s working push-pull and engineering trains together with rail tours and test workings. understands not just like, the layout and all that melodic, it's more of the fine detailing, the yeah. lights, down to digital now. To be honest, I was just said to someone earlier that there are very few people, that, if you think about how you look at a layout, how many skills there are, car, electronics. You can see it, you can <laughs> bend down, you can actually see it. It's very, very good. Very good, good on the camera. I'll tell you what, is there more that, that, is really, that looks really decent on me then. Is there more? Yeah, there more. This double O gauge layout is called Kirkby Stephen West, exhibited by Ian MacDonald and Martin Wright. This layout depicts Kirkby Stephen West on the Settle and Carlisle line in between 1955 and 1964 modelling the transition from steam to diesel. It is a continuous run design with storage loops at the rear and is operated from the centre with analogue control. The track on the scenic area is SMP with Code 75 Nickel Silver Railway. Points in the scenic area are by Markway. The rolling stock is a mixture of steam and diesel, all of which can have been seen on the Settle and Carlisle line. It is a mixture of kit and scratch built, together with modified and enhanced ready to run products. As the Settle and Carlisle was used extensively as a testing ground for new locomotives, particularly early diesels, we took the opportunity to run stock which we would not usually have seen on the line as well. The scenic area is made from polystyrene blocks mounted within a plywood lattice covered with plaster. The finishing materials are woodland scenics and green scene scenic products. All the principal buildings and structures are scratch built, except for the signal box which is a converted ratio kit. The four signals are operated using Fulgur X slow action point motors. Three controllers are connected to the layout to allow independent operation of the two main lines and the goods yard. The station, signal box and goods shed are illuminated while the campfire has a fire simulation effect and uses a sooth smoke generator. I'll mop it up when I take the tray back in again for the next round. There might be some
This Ogedge layout is Penpole Key, exhibited by John Sanders. Penpole Key is a 7mm Ogedge fine scale layout set in the 1950s. Penpole Key is a small Cornish key on the River Fowey and gets its name from Penpole Creek, halfway between Lost Withiel and Fowey. The majority of the clay is loaded into small five plank indoor wagons and covered by tarpaulins to keep out the rain. The higher quality clay is bagged and loaded into vans or standard opens and sheeted over. This double O gauge layout is Door Hill St Stephens, exhibited by the Saw Valley Model Railway Club. This fictitious layout is based in the South Yorkshire North Midland area between 1957 and 1962, allowing the Saw Valley Model Railway Club to run both steam and early diesels from the era. It features mainly BR Midlands locomotives, with visiting stock from the eastern and western regions. Door Hill has been built to double O gauge standard and is analog controlled using six control panels and 12 operators. It is normally housed at the Saul Valley Model Railway Club's club room. The four-sided design of Door Hill St. Stephen's allows for three mainline stations, a motive power depot, a large triangular junction, goods yard and a long mainline run for the trains. Train movements are to a schedule for passenger and fast freight. The goods yard and slow freight work independently. Stock is owned by club members and is a mixture of kit built and ready to run. Most locomotives have crew and lamps fitted and real coal in the tenders. All express passenger trains are close coupled for an improved appearance. Most of the stock has been weathered by one of our younger members. The operating signals are a mixture of semaphore and two aspect colour lights, which are all controlled from the individual operating panels. All track work is Pico 100.
standard. My goodness, my genius. Joe Hill decided he wants to be. So if they've accepted that kind of accent of them, now they've accepted the fish as well. Can I buy that? Well, as soon as that clears. <laughs> This double O gauge layout is Titton Hall Yard, exhibited by Boston Model Railway Society. The layout features a four track main line at a position where it reduces to a double track across a bridge. Under this bridge there is a coal concentration yard. Rakes of MGR coal hoppers are brought to the yard empty to be loaded by the working loading tower. This has been entirely 3D printed, including the operating mechanism. This is driven by a servo that is controlled from an Arduino microcontroller. Operators operate the mechanism using an electronic switch. The operator manually controls the timing of the operation. All track is Pico Code 100, ballasted with fine N-gauge ballast. Code 100 track was chosen to allow older ready-to-run stock to run, if required. The layout is operated using the Lens LH100 DCC system and is split into three power districts. Many locomotives are fitted with sound decoders, depending on the members present. This O-gauge layout is Grindley Brook, exhibited by Hillingdon Railway Modellers. It is based on a fictional station set on the ex-London and North Western Railway LNWR line between Whitchurch and Chester in Shropshire. Although there was never a large station with a yard at Grindley Brook, the location was chosen as the point at which the railway crossed the Flangothlin Canal. Only later did we discover that LMS had opened a halt at this junction in 1937. The scenic area has scratch-built buildings, signals and infrastructure. They have been brought together to create a typical NWR station of the early 1870s, updated by the LMS and ultimately passed into BR ownership. The trains are formed of LMR stock with a sprinkling of WR workings. The track is built from CNL components to the finest standard of 31.5 mm gauge, 0 mf. The track layout was determined by the overall curve of the layout which allows it to fit in place on one of the club's test tracks. Control is exercised by the signalman using a miniature lever frame 
with full mechanical interlocking requiring the drivers to follow the signal indications. As soon as you're inside, stop. But you just bring it to a stand and This N-gauge layout is King's Park, exhibited by Andy Stephanie. King's Park is an N-gauge layout based in North London during the 1980s, close to Queen's Park Station. Here the four-track West Coast Main Line runs parallel to the overground section of the Bakerloo Line, which also shares track with the overground Watford service. A wide range of suitable rolling stock runs on King's Park, including overhead electric classes 85, 86 and 87. Passenger services include motor rail parcels, express passenger and even Mark II Pullmans. Keep an eye out for the APTP on a test run. Other traffic includes container and van trains, while shared underground lines see a combination of class 501 and 313 three-car units, as well as 1959 stock from London Transport. The layout is nearly 30 feet long and 5 feet deep and features 28 sidings in the storage yard at the rear. With so many lines to keep running, Kings Park keeps 8 operators busy throughout the day.
To view more about building model railways, click on the playlist. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.